Hi, and welcome back to the Developer Show's coverage at GDD India. I'm Dan Kalpin here with Wayne Pikarski to chat about the latest from Android Things. So, what is Android Things, and how does it relate to Android? Well, the thing with it is it's just another flavor of Android in the same way that you've got Android Wear or Android TV. It's just another version, except it's designed for building IoT devices, and especially devices without screens. And you can embed it in any kind of IoT application in the same place that you would have used something else before, so yeah. So what, is, what kind of hardware does Android Things run on? So Android Things runs on custom-made hardware. So I've got a little circuit board here. Um, so the circuit board is based around a concept called a system on a module, where it's a small computing module with the CPU, the Wi-Fi, and the RAM on it. And that's the core part that we provide software for, and everything else is controllable by the developer. So this board here is a developer kit, which has USB, Ethernet, and stuff like that. But you wouldn't use all of that in a production device. So this is used for making prototypes, and then once you're finished, you design your own custom board, and then you have it manufactured in large quantities, and you know, it's cheap and affordable because it has only the components that you need. So what is a system on module, or SOM, and how does it help IoT designers? The thing with SOM is it's a common module that Google supports. So we provide the kernel, the drivers, the libraries, everything needed, and you don't have to do any of the source code or anything like that, so we provide binaries for that, and then you can focus on making your own application. And because the SOM is kind of a fixed design, you don't have to worry about it changing or it's, everything's handled for you. So now where does the Android Thing project stand? I mean, you know, can developers use it today? Yeah, so right now it's a developer preview. So you can use it for making test devices and trying out new ideas. And we're hoping that next year we're going to be going to the full LTS release, which stands for long-term support. And that's going to be the production version that you're going to be able to make devices and push updates out to. And you know they're going to be ready for consumers to make really nice, reliable products. We have a really good story around updates and our team makes the security updates and pushes them to the devices. So it makes devices that are really secure that you know consumers are going to be able to have confidence in. That's great. Now, I know we recently announced the winners of the Android Things Hacksters.io contest. Now, can you tell us about some entries and you know that might have stood out to you? Yeah, we had a whole bunch of really cool submissions to the Hackster contest. It was actually really hard to try to pick a winner for that. There were three really good entrants that were awarded the prizes for it. Actually, one of my favorites was one where someone built a newsreader where you could hold it in your hands and it was like a braille display where you could use your hands to have news articles read to you. And I really think with Android Things, we're going to open up possibilities to make cool devices that are going to help people who might not be able to type or might not be able to speak or might have uh, vision problems or something like that. And so people are going to be able to make cool devices. And because they're so easy to make, it's going to be possible to make more of them. Right now, making custom specialized devices is very expensive. And I think it's really going to, we call it democratizing hardware development. We want to be able to make it so anyone can make hardware in the same way that anyone can make software. So I know you've traveled the world introducing developers to Android things. You know, what has that been like? It's been really fun. It's been great to sort of come to events like GD India. Um, we have a huge sandbox area there and we've had a ton of people come up to us and you know they want to know how to do things or how to build certain, you know, they've got questions and it's really cool to, you know, really come here and meet people because there's only so much you can do on, you know, social media or whatever. So it's been really great to meet people in person and you know spend time with them and find out what they're working on. Now you've actually done code labs where you've introduced people to Android things. You know, what's that like? It's really fun because like we give these kits away to everyone in the room and they open them up, put them all together and it's some people have never done hardware development before. I mean, a lot of software developers, they write software, but then, you know, with the kits, you realize this is something you can pull apart and play with and experiment with. And it's, it's kind of like playing with toys when you're a child, you can build things and assemble it yourself. So it's really fun to watch people do that. And, you know, they leave the code lab going, wow, you know, I can use the camera, run TensorFlow on it and use it and it works. And now I can take it home and build some, you know, cool project that they're trying to work on. So yeah. Where can developers go for more information about Android things? Yeah, so the best place is the Android developer site. So, you know, developeraandroid.com forward slash things. And all of our documentation's there, the setup guides, samples, and so forth. And that's a really great way to get started and sort of learn more about Android things. Awesome. Thank you so much, Wayne, for joining us today. Now, visit the description below if you'd like to find out how to get started with your own Android things projects.